Hey, it's Chris Hawk. So I want to talk about NFTs and more importantly, I want to talk about infinity NFTs and their place in the world. And I know a lot of you watching this are like, Chris, I don't even know what NFT means. What is this non fungible token mumbo jumbo that everybody's talking about and posting about and digitizing tokenizing things. Trust me, I didn't know what NFTs were uh, six months ago. Uh, heck, I didn't even know the power of blockchain a year and a half ago. And so uh, I want to have this discussion because I've been working very hard and developing the technology behind Infinity NFTs and putting together some of the infrastructure and the financial systems behind this. And I thought it was really important to try to try to explain to you NFTs and Infinity NFTs and why they're important to our way of life moving forward. It may not seem like it today. It may seem like a fad. It may seem like this thing that people are crazy in the head um, and it may not make sense to you, but when you truly understand the power of uh, not only what this technology can do, but where we are in the progress of the internet, right? And so we'll start with that. Before we even get into NFTs, look at the internet today. What is there so much of? There's so much content. There's so much intellectual property that is online now to where the point is there's so much for free. We should be thanking ourselves, be blessed to be living in today's era where we can find information on anything just about for free. I can go to YouTube and learn how to crochet tomorrow. I could learn how to shoot a gun. I could learn how to throw axes. I could learn how to do just about anything on YouTube, good or bad, it's there. So there is no shortage of intellectual property and information, uh, art, music, video, you name it, it's all there, right? It's all right in front of us. But here's the thing is how, how do people make a living with this? How do you protect that? How do you sell that? How do you, how do you build a business off of that? And, and we've seen things come across like, okay, if you're a professional in an industry, you could create a course, you could monetize your information by selling that information through courses and training and so forth and coaching and all those types of mediums. We saw that explode, huge multi-billion dollar industry right there, which is amazing, right? Like now you can learn anything and you can actually hire professionals to teach you without going to a college or an academy to do that. So you're seeing that, you're seeing artists, uh, basically, I guess you would say, you're seeing artists become available for the first time. You're seeing their music through Spotify and some of these places. However, because their music is available, because they're out there on social media available to you to interact with, um, it has become increasingly difficult for them to monetize their art, their music, where record labels kind of own that industry, times have changed. So music is very specific. Video YouTubers, right, are reliant on advertising revenues of the platforms in which they uh, host their media to be able to make a living or sponsorships or whatever sideline ways. They're not actually paying paid for creating good content. It's the byproduct of creating good content. You create great content on YouTube, hopefully people like it, they subscribe, YouTube says, hey, you got a lot of viewers, we're gonna give you a piece of the ad revenue to those videos, right? Sponsors say, hey, we want you to talk about our products because you got a million viewers every time a video is played. It's hard to get rich off that model, but it's there, okay? And so we're at a, a crossroads here where we have all this abundance of great information, amazing intellectual property across the board. So how do you protect it? How do you sell it? How do you make money or invest in that? That's the next evolution. And so that's where NFTs have come into play. NFT or non-fungible tokens, it really brings up the idea of saying, hey, I have a, a picture, I have a piece of music, I have something that I created digitally online and I want to sell that and I want to guarantee there's only five of these available. And so perhaps if you create a sketch, I could create a sketch right now and be awful because I can't draw, but I could create a non-fungible token which says, hey, there's only five of these or one of these available, right? And it, it's a hundred dollars. If you want this ugly sketch, you can pay a hundred bucks for it. And if you like it and you could sell it to somebody else and make a hundred or more, whatever you want to sell, just like a piece of physical art, okay? But now because of non-fungible tokens, when you tokenize this intellectual property, it goes onto blockchain, thank goodness for blockchain and cryptography, right? So you can certify that it's the only one, you can guarantee ownership, whoever that owner is, it's very clear, right? You have the certificate that says that you own this sketch and you could transfer that to someone else. And so this all happens, you don't have to go through some other third party, some company or what have you, it can all be done online through blockchain, uh, cryptography, all these great decentralized apps that exist. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to do that. So here's the rub, is you might be asking yourself, because I asked myself the same question, well, 
why can't I just take a screenshot of your sketch and then I have it? Why would I pay $100 for that? And that's very true. Now, I'm the king of screenshots. I screenshot everything. I see something I like, I screenshot it. I don't even know what I do with them, but I have them, right? Because I think they're cool. But it doesn't mean I own them. I can go to the art gallery and take a picture of the Mona Lisa, but it doesn't mean I own it, right? I could take a picture of a Ferrari, but it doesn't mean I own the Ferrari. Does that make sense? So the importance here is you can actually own the original in a digital format for the first time. Yes, people can take screenshots and you want them to take screenshots of that stuff because then it gets more popular and people are like, man, I want the original of that thing. How do I get that? Because I bet it's worth a lot of money, right? Because it becomes popular, it becomes an asset that people want. It becomes something that's out there and people understand that they see and they want, right? So that's okay, screenshots and those things are okay, but now you can own the NFT, which is certifies you own the original, one of one, one of five, one of a hundred, whatever it is. Uh, and you could actually hold on to that for years and years and years. And if I become the next Picasso, then that could be worth some money. Uh, probably not, but it's possible, right? You can do that with just about anything. And so I could post, I could go online and create an NFT on anything and try to sell it. Doesn't mean everybody's gonna buy it, Right? It's not an instantly like, okay, I can just start posting pictures and people are gonna wanna buy my art and it's gonna go for millions of dollars. No, it's not gonna happen. Maybe over time that could be if, if you create great work and you become uh, a professional in that space. It is possible, but at least this is a great way for you to, uh, to monetize your work. All right, so that's NFTs. Now, INFTs are a different animal. And this is something where it's been a passion project of mine because I've built companies and I've helped different intellectual property owners build their businesses and it is very difficult. But this offers a way to bridge the gap between the fans that exist, the consumers that buy stuff, right? And us, some of the ones that, that create the stuff. And how do we bridge the gap between somebody who uses it and shares it and somebody who gets the benefit of helping that person or that brand or that um, that product owner, how do, how do we help them succeed, okay? So I'll give you an example, because all an infinity NFT is, now that you know what an NFT, it's a non-fungible token, it's a way to tokenize intellectual property to guarantee ownership, uh, set a, li uh, a limited quantity if that's what you want, and that's it. Now an infinity NFT is basically just an NFT that accesses a staking contract to receive royalties on that intellectual property. I'll say that again. An infinity NFT is just an NFT that accesses a staking contract, meaning you can stake in that intellectual property to be able to receive royalties on the intellectual property. So it's not just about the picture, but now if I go, say I created an NFT for my ugly sketch, and instead of you buying the NFT, you bought the infinity NFT, which means you can still get the sketch, okay? And there still can be a limited quantity, but probably not, but there can be. But if I went on to take that sketch and I, I use that sketch in advertisements and websites, if it was used in commercials, if it was used in selling to some of these licensing sites like iStock Photo or Shutterstock or what have you, some of that licensing revenue I would share with you because you have a, a licensing contract built into the Infinity NFT or the royalties contract. Okay, so not only do you own and you can have a piece of that intellectual property, but you can get a piece of all the future revenue that comes from my ugly sketch. <laughs> okay, so how cool is that? So now translate that into the opportunity that exists for a YouTube channel or a podcast or a musician. Think about that. My fiance is a musician. She's a, a pop star in Asia. She's amazing. She's got amazing music and her vocals are, are, are unbelievable, right? And then COVID hit and the whole industry just kind of went Psh, right but now infinity nfts allows her to take her new song that she just came out with create it in infinity nft right and she can send all her fans to this infinity nft profile and say hey grab my song grab the infinity nft for my song you can get the song you can get a special edition if you stake five dollars if you stake a hundred dollars i'll give you autograph cover art whatever she wants to give with that but then if that song goes on to be on the radio, if it's number one, if she's in commercials, if she gets movie deals from that song, whatever's in that royalty contract, because you staked her song, you get a piece of her future success from that song. And it could include merchandise, whatever. So the, the power for her is now these stakeholders can help fund her dream, her passion, that helps her monetize her music so she can make more great music. And the fans that believe in her, the fans that love listening to her song can then go out there and share, hey, did you hear Shang's new 
you hit single you got to check it out grab her infinity nft right it's a huge it's a great investment she's going places right and and if she's already famous which she is they'll already see the value in that and they want to buy that right and so it gives people a, a great opportunity to stake in the future success of some of these digital assets a youtube channel is another great example okay because I can't tell you how many times I've seen so many great YouTube videos and I'm like, I look at how many subscribers or views they have and it says like 30 views. You know, I know my videos, I put them up and I think they're great, but you know, maybe I'll have 50 views, 100 views, maybe a thousand if I'm lucky. And you're just like, man, that's such great content. Why aren't they getting a million plus views? Well, it's hard to get those kinds of views. You need supporters. And so if you find a great piece of content on YouTube and you say, wow, this YouTuber is amazing. I want to stake $100 in their INFT. So you could stake in their YouTube INFT and that $100 helps pay them, helps them do better work, grow and scale and create more followers, whatever they are going to do. And if that YouTube channel then goes on to make advertising revenues or sells merchandise, whatever they do, whatever licensing revenues built into the contract, okay? Whatever's built into there, you could get a piece of that in their future success. How cool is that? You could even get a piece of all the staking of all the fans. So it really bridges the gap between the people that consume this content, use this content or products, it could be physical products too, uh, and, the, and, and the creators themselves. And it helps fund them without having to use centralized parties uh, like your typical uh, Sony records, if you will, or some of these record labels and music and, and all of that. So infinity NFTs are just NFTs, okay, that allow you to access royalties through staking contracts. And it's been a, an, an amazing, amazing journey. Guys, it's been so fun for me to say, okay, we've been talking to movie deals. We've been talking to musicians. We've been talking to, we have a, a gentleman who owns the patents on creating a floating city uh, in the Middle East. And so they've already built these floating um, villas and some of this technology already in the Burj out there. It's, it's unbelievable. I want one. Uh, but instead of investing in the actual property itself, I think they start at like 7 million, I can buy the Infinity. I could stake in the Infinity NFT for the technology to build those villas, to build the floating city. So instead of just making money off investing off one property, I can hold a stake in the technology itself, the intellectual property, and get a piece of all the properties the whole entire city, right? And me as an investor, that's a great investment. I want to invest in intellectual property, right? Just like you might invest in Apple computers and you might invest in Apple and you can get a piece of, if that stock grows as Apple produces more and more revenue, you know, you don't get a piece of their revenue, but if they are successful, you can become successful too. So this way we can do that on a micro level. We can do that with YouTubers, podcasters, artists, musicians, um, beauty companies. We've got a beauty company we're talking to, you know, for beauty products. So the great thing is some of these companies already have revenues. So when you stake into their intellectual property, when they make product sales out there in the market, if it's in that contract, you could make a piece of the, the licensing of all the product sales that happen in that particular intellectual property company. All right, so there's so many cool use cases. Uh, we've been building this and building this and, and working on this technology, patenting this technology, um, getting ready for deploying what we call Star Stake. And Star Stake is the application that you'll go to. You'll be able to go there, check it out, browse around, say, wow, I wanna, I wanna stake this YouTuber, this musician, this song, this project, this business, this thing, this, all these great opportunities for you to not only see them and get access to the intellectual property yourself and use it or consume it or collect it, uh, but for you to also be able to resell it. So if a song ends up becoming a platinum number one or whatever, and you have the infinity NFT of that, maybe it's a limited edition, maybe there's only 30 of them. If you have that and that becomes a platinum song or a number one song, guess what? You could turn around and sell that for a lot of money because it creates income. You're getting royalties from that song for a long time, depending on what the contract duration is, right? So it's not just about creating, putting this picture online as an NFT and hoping it sells amongst the sea of other pictures, right? And hoping maybe it, it goes on and resells after that. But not only do you have the picture, but you have the royalties uh, built into that contract. So what that picture does and down the future, uh, down the line, you can get access to that uh, and income. So the difference between an NFT and NFT, if it sells, right, that is um, the difference between having a dividend 
right? Yeah. Capital gains, I should say. So if you sell an, an NFT, that's a, a capital gain compared to an infinity NFT, which creates income from revenues, that is uh, income revenue, it's different. So um, it's important to know that. But anyways, just wanted to have a chat with you. Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. Again, an infinity NFT is just an NFT with access to a staking contract to receive royalties. Okay, so you have a master NFT and the infinity NFT says, how much of the master do you get and how much of the licensing revenues and royalties do you get off of that? And there's a bunch of other things uh, that I won't go over and confuse you. Um, but there is also a really cool feature that I want to mention. So part of an infinity NFT, if you were to stake an infinity NFT in a song or a YouTube channel or whatever it is, a piece of art, a uh, construction project, you can also get access tokens. So you can get access to perks depending on what that IP creator chooses. So maybe they say, okay, for a thousand dollar stake, I'll give you access to this, this, and this. And maybe they deliver you product. Maybe they give you access to their book or whatever it is. So there can be access tokens that are given alongside of that. And we see that with Gary Vee. He has his little sketches and he gives you access to dinner with him or event tickets or what have you. You can also get access to what we call collectible tokens. So when you purchase an INFT or you stake in an INFT, not only do you have the royalties contract with that and you have the intellectual property if that's part of the contract, but you also can get a meme token or a collectible token. Um, for example, for my fiance, her name is Shang Belmonte. She can have her own Shang coin, which can be traded on the open market. And so for every dollar you spend staking her INFT, you can get a little Shang coin and you can collect those. And as more people get them, the more valuable that that becomes. And you can trade them on the open, open market, use them to buy stuff. And so just imagine you could have like a JLo coin, you could have a Beyonce coin, you could have a uh, New York Jets coin, if that existed, it could happen. It could, and I believe it will happen. But the cool thing is it's built right into the Infinity NFT is because you're already a fan anyway. So how cool would it be to get a collectible coin that is worth something, it only goes up in value that you can trade with other people and it could be worth more tomorrow than it is today, right? Their own currency. So you could have an A-Rod coin, you could have a LeBron coin, you could have anything, it just, it doesn't matter. Um, so that's all built into this thing. So we're looking to deploy this, the first version of Star Stake here in October. That is our timeline. Uh, I can't wait for you all to see some of the great, uh, uh, the first INFTs coming out. Uh, we've got a long, long list, a line of people waiting to get their first INFTs published. Um, but I, I'm just, I could not be more excited. So I kind of wanted to break it down. Hopefully I didn't uh, confuse you. Uh, but I just, I think this will help you understand the difference between a traditional non-fungible token and an infinity non-fungible token. And it's kind of purpose in the world. So that's it. That's all I got, guys. We'll see ya.